soon. Details coming up. We've all seen firefighters and hand crews trekking through all kinds of terrain to fight fires. And have you ever wondered how much all that gear weighs and how hard it is to carry? Well, I'm going to try it on and let you know. A CHP officer reunites with an infant he saved three years ago. In general, it's about protecting your upper body and the most vital organs. The safety benefits of motorcycle airbags as they gain traction among recreational riders. You may be able to see them at a zoo, but rarely in the wild, where an onslaught was just spotted coming up. And Eva Mather is about to take her talent to the big leagues and sing the national anthem at the Padres game. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts right now. Farm is not some gigantic economic powerhouse. It's a small farm and doesn't have the, the kind of economic um, benefits that would be derived if they had some other kinds of large destination resort complex. Insight from the owner of Carlsbad Aqua Farms as they get ready to say goodbye to the Agua Heavy on the Lagoon. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. And I'm Kirsten Holmes. In tonight for Marcella Lee, NRG Energy, the power company that owns that property, discontinued the Aqua Farms lease on that site. I met with Thomas Graham, the owner of Aqua Farms, about the big change and what's next for him and the area. The process of packing up a lot of our equipment, our gear that we've been used for growing oysters and mussels for the last many decades. And most of that's being donated to other shellfish farmers and research scientists. Thomas Grimm is the CEO of the Carlsbad Aqua Farm, where they've grown oysters and other shellfish for decades. He says they're shifting their focus from shellfish farming to coastal habitat restoration, and the farm will officially close on August 15th. It, it's bittersweet uh, uh, to say goodbye as uh, doing what I've been doing, and I'll miss that part of my life. CBS 8 featured Tom and the Aqua Farm in an Earth 8 report in 2021. But now that they're closing, Tom will continue his efforts to save the world, or at least our coastline, with several other projects with the same love and respect for Mother Nature. Growing uh, shellfish is one of those most sustainable ways of creating seafood, and our, our approach isn't just how we grow it, it's that we distribute it locally. California, as an example, imports about 92, 93% of the seafood, which is strange for a state that's as coastal as we are. But the closing of a beloved landmark in Carlsbad won't go unnoticed. In a statement to CBS 8 NRG, the property owner says in part, quote, in recent years, the landscape of the property has changed rapidly. Among other things, the Encina power plant has now been removed. The ocean desalination plant is installing a new water intake structure, and the Encina site now hosts temporary fire station number seven for the city of Carlsbad. As part of this changing landscape, Cabrillo Power LLC provided the requisite notice that it is discontinuing Carlsbad Aqua Farms license to use the property. Tom says he's grateful for the time he's had to do something he loves so very much. Energy's got their own vision. They're working closely with uh, the city and with other planners as to what would be the highest best use of this amazing lagoon for the community and one that also has some economic benefit to the city as well. It's work Tom says he'll continue while looking ahead to what's next for the area. And that's why Carlsbad is such a special place for me because the culture here is made up of a lot of people who care about the environment. Well, this is the latest city in the county to decide to start enforcing an encampment ban. The city council passed a resolution last night to return to enforcing the ban, which has been on the books since the 1960s, but enforcement was paused during the pandemic. Mayor John Franklin says there are 170 people living on the streets of Vista and adds that the vast majority refuse services, so enforcement is needed. Homeless advocates say encampment bans don't solve the problem. One person who's been unhoused on and off for years now tells us the housing help that's offered is too restrictive. Being by 8 o'clock, I can't have friends or anything like that come by and visit me or anything like that. No, that's too much like being locked up in jail. According to Mayor Franklin, deputies will be out clearing encampments tomorrow. Hundreds of sharp health care workers are protesting at the hospital campus in La Mesa. They're demanding better pay, better hours and more staffing. This follows a similar protest weeks ago where at least a thousand people showed up. The union says Sharp isn't budging. Hospital executives at Sharp say, well, they put out a statement saying the union is to blame for stalled negotiations. These employees have worked for a year without a contract.
And union workers at Rady Children's Hospital are getting ready to vote on a new tentative contract agreement tomorrow. The hospital and union leaders reached a deal yesterday, just days before nurses was set to strike for the second time in a month. Union leaders describe it as the best contract offer in decades. In a statement to CBS at 8, Rady Children's Hospital says it is hopeful this tentative agreement will be ratified. A Mount Carmel High School teacher who had a sexual relationship with an underage student was sentenced to three years in state prison today. Stacy Michelle Walker was arrested earlier this year. The 40-year-old pleaded guilty last month. Prosecutors say she started to exchange sexually explicit texts with a 15-year-old in 2017. That turned into years of sexual abuse. The victim reported the abuse to authorities last summer after they turned 18. If you've used self-checkout kiosks while shopping, you may have found yourself stuck waiting for help at times. A California Senate bill aims to fix that and reduce shoplifting. CBS 8's Alex Lai breaks down SB 1446 and what it means for customers and workers. Self-checkout kiosks at stores like Walmart can make it really easy to get in and out of the store, but this bill has safety and harassment concerns for workers, as well as saying it causes an increase in theft. The biggest reason they say is from understaffing. We've seen how customers get mad or they get violently. violently. Like uh, a few days ago, I had a customer that got violent. She pepper sprayed me. SB 1446, or the Retail Theft Prevention and Safe Staffing Act, is intended to prevent worker harassment and reduce theft at self-checkout kiosks in retail grocery and drug stores. SB 1446 provides crucial protections to workers who are on the front lines um, against these acts of violence and anxiety and concern. The bill would require stores that choose to have self-checkout kiosks have a one employee to two kiosk ratio, have one traditional checkout station remain open, and give workers a 60-day notice when new technology is implemented that could impact their jobs. This is a win-win-win situation. You want to reduce crime, you want to reduce um, theft in stores, you want to make sure that there aren't workplace-related crimes where customers are going after checkers. Well, making sure it's fully staffed is the best way to do that. Supporters of the bill say having more staff in self-checkout will help deter customers from stealing and reduce worker harassment by having more help available. Self-checkout is associated with understaffing. Understaffing is strongly associated with disrespect and bullying in customer worker interactions. And self-checkout itself is directly associated with that kind of disrespectful and bullying treatment. Since introduced in February, amendments have been made to address concerns raised by employers and others, including allowing items with anti-theft devices to go through self-checkout, not requiring self-checkout machines to be considered a potential workplace hazard for employees, and allowing self-checkout workers to do other tasks as long as one person is dedicated at all times to helping customers. Alex Lai, CBS 8. Thanks, Alex. The bill hasn't been approved yet, but if enacted, a store could be fined $100 a day for each violation. Have you ever wondered what it's like for firefighters to lug around all that heavy equipment while fighting fires in the summertime heat? CBS 8's Brian White got to try on some of that gear. Yeah, he caught up with Cal Fire in the San Miguel area where crews have been working the Anita Fire and have it almost fully contained. Freeway tool out. First saw, head on the rail, get every step. This is tool check for one of Cal Fire's hand crews as they file out of the truck. These men and women are from the California Conservation Corps. So this is our uh, web gear. You can put it on like a backpack. Oh, there we go. Uh, he also carries this this chainsaw. And then you carry this by hand? Yeah, yeah you can carry that by hand or there's a, a pad to carry it over your shoulder there. Um, you kind of put it up. Oh, you go like this. Right there, and it makes it a little more comfortable. And these guys have to hike uh, hike into the fire. They have to, once they get to the fire and they're carrying all this heavy gear, then they have to use these chainsaws, these Pulaski's, and all these different tools. 
Fire Captain Michael Cornett with CAL FIRE San Diego showed me some of the gear that hand crews and firefighters lug on their backs for miles in some cases when working to contain fires. This certain appliance here, this uh, allows us to put water into secondary lines. These packs have everything inside of them that we need to advance that hose line. This is 45 pounds, so it's heavy also. Um, and if you want to try it on here, this is your wildland hand tool. This uh, cuts and scrapes and something that you'd carry with your hose pack. So I only wore the gear for 15 minutes on a short walk. Altogether, it was about 50 pounds. I was drenched in sweat and definitely felt how heavy it was on my back and shoulders. And how much does heat exhaustion come into play? Uh, it comes in, it's a very important uh, part of our job. Uh, we always stress that we want to keep everybody safe, uh, take frequent breaks when possible, uh, stay in the shade when possible, uh, and that's not always po possible on these on these fires because it's fast moving, uh, potentially structures threatened. The Anita fire broke out Monday, sparking evacuations and shelter in place orders in the area. It grew to 20 acres, but hand crews like these men and women working in the heat to create fire breaks have it now almost fully contained. They go in with the chainsaws, with the, their axe. And, and it's hot, it's, uh, it's not pleasant conditions, uh, it's, it's hard to breathe because of the smoke. They go in and they do all the hard work on the, on the fire. Near Rancho San Diego, Brian White, CBSA. Thank you, Brian. Well, the Red Cross is now showing off its new tech based here in San Diego, all to help people impacted by natural disasters. It's this new vehicle called the Move 3. We're told it will help support emergency shelters in disaster zones, offering power, internet access, and lighting. It can be sent anywhere in the country as needed. There are two other similar vehicles in the U.S., just three of these total. When not helping with relief efforts, the vehicles are often displayed at events that promote STEM careers. Well, three North County lifeguards are being recognized for saving a life. Details still ahead. Plus, a heartfelt reunion as a CHP officer checks in on the first day of school for a student whose life he helped save years ago. And a recent ocelot sighting stirs up a lot of excitement. We'll tell you why coming up. Lots of sunshine in the forecast once again for today. We're definitely feeling the heat out there. Now it's a current temperature in downtown of 76 degrees, but we are gearing up for a minor slip in temperatures and a big warm up next week. Details are ahead.